A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the holy ones throughout Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all encouragement, who encourages us in our every affliction, so that we may be able to encourage those who are in any affliction with the encouragement with which we ourselves are encouraged by God. For as Christ's sufferings overflow to us, so through Christ's so through Christ does our encouragement also overflow. If we are afflicted, it is for your encouragement and salvation. If we are encouraged, it is for your encouragement, which enables you to endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is firm, for we know that as you share in the sufferings, you also share in the encouragement. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we're, we're switching gears a little bit with our readings uh, now. First uh, reading is going to be from, now the New Testament, we have been reading from, from Tobit. Now we're in the second letter of uh, to the Corinthians, St. Paul to the Corinthians. Uh, one of my favorite letters of, of the New Testament, and it's really helpful, I think, to to sit down and, and like if you can read the whole thing through at once or maybe in a couple sittings. Uh, sometimes I've said this before, when you get snippets of it, it, it becomes a little disjointed and you don't get the overall kind of flavor and the overall sentiment of, of Paul's heart. It becomes little uh, when it's taken in pieces, like little doctrinal statements here. But when you read the whole letter, it's like reading a love letter from someone. Uh, you, you see what they're, they're, how they're feeling. And, and St. Paul has a deep love for the people of Corinth. And he starts off with that sense of, of love. He's, he's encouraging, encouraging the people. And, and that's what the saints still do for us today. And, and hopefully the ministers of the church, myself included, do that uh, too. Uh, the ministry of encouragement. Uh, yes, you're going to suffer. You're going to have setbacks. Uh, you're going to sin. Uh, none of us are perfect, but keep going. God is with you. He loves you. And his sufferings are overflowing into you, as is his encouragement. Remember the, the way of the cross, how Jesus fell three times, but he was encouraged by, by the Father. He was encouraged by his, his blessed mother. 
and by those key figures around him like Veronica and Simon of Cyrene and, and the women of Jerusalem. So too, when we fall throughout our lives, we have a lot of people encouraging us. The key for us is to listen to the voice of the encouragers, not to the voice of the discouragers, those who want to say, yes, you are bad, stay down, you're a failure, you're a disappointment, just die, give up. God doesn't love you. No one loves you, right? That's all the voice from the enemy. That's the voice of the world trying to tell us. Or get up and, and turn your back on God and, and save yourself. Uh, just like those the, the leaders shouted to Jesus at the cross, save yourself, come down and save yourself. No, Jesus surrendered. So too, in the midst of our suffering, if we can keep our focus on God and stay surrendered, what, what, what we're doing is we're opening our ears to hear the voice of God encouraging us. And that's grace that, get, that allows us to, to keep, keep going. And we ourselves will be blessed and those around us will be blessed when they see our, our example. And that's why Jesus, you know, these Beatitudes in, in our gospel are so fitting. Blessed, blessed, blessed. They're all things that are somewhat heavy, poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who are persecuted, those who are insulted. Blessed are you. Blessed. Because why? God is with you. And, and God's voice, God's grace is, is all that matters, is all that you need. If we, if we can open ourselves up to it. You know, Jesus went up the mountain, just like Moses did. When Moses went up Mount Sinai to receive the law, the Ten Commandments, those were don't do this, don't do that, so forth. Jesus goes up a similar mountain, the new prophet, Christ, and he receives the new law. A law that's fundamentally one of encouragement. Praise be Jesus Christ and praise be God the Father who encourages us and is the source of all consolation. Amen.